You're welcome back. Uh, it's still our Nigeria we're talking about on the show today and what is happening or is likely to happen to our economy. Uh, right now, we know that um, there were complaints that the federal government had, through the Ways and Means, borrowed more than the limit that were, they were supposed to borrow. And people were saying this thing should be corrected. But instead of that, the Senate uh, has increased the federal government's borrowing from 5% to 15%. So we're going to be talking with um, an international finance and economic expert uh, here in Lagos State in the person of Mukta Mohammed, who will help us make sense out of what is going on and the implication uh, to our economy. Mukta, good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so 5% to 15%. When there, were, uh, there was an outcry that the federal government has arbitrarily uh, taken too much money from the Central Bank of Nigeria or through the ways and means, uh, we were expecting that uh, that would be corrected. But instead of it, it has been jacked up to 15%. Is that a good thing for us or a bad thing? It depends on which side you are. If you are on the side of the government and the Senate, is a good thing. Uh, if you're on the side of the masses, then it's a bad thing for you. Uh, what is actually mean? You have to ask yourself, why do they have to do this fire brigade? Uh, um, uh, uh, make sure they pass it into law. But uh, we are not. We are not yet sure if the outgoing president signed it before he left office, or maybe it's the incoming president that will sign that. We are waiting for that. Or from the filler, we got they did that because they they, they realized that if they don't do that, their allowances. Uh, they are, they, what they call their exit bonuses and allowances will not they will not get it because government seems to say they don't have money on to the borrow. So let's hopefully hope that the incoming administration will put an end to that. Okay, but what what are the implications on the economy if this uh, continues and they go ahead and sign it into law if it has not been signed into law already? What is the implication on the economy? Big implication. Um, we we are looking from five to. 5 to 15 percent. And if you remember that the Amod is the federal government that borrowed from CBN about two point something. So by the time you add up that by 10 percent, you realize they are adding more than a, a trillion into that. And that also will increase our debt profile. That also will fuel inflation because uh, the reason why CBN have not been able to, to, to tackle inflation is just because um, there's so much liquidity in the system and this liquidity is driven by the ways and means because some of these uh, borrowing are, are not spend on productive ventures they are, they are spent on salary and allowances and so it definitely they add to the to the to the cost of governance which in turn does not add in terms of productivity so it's not a good thing for us uh, we already we have over borrowed we are already running at a budget deficit we are already running in a country that has been 97 percent of its uh, of its revenue on debt services so it's not it's not good for us but uh, again um, the good thing is that uh, is the is the CBN is also a, a arm of government or belong to a set of government. So what they, they tend to do, maybe they tend to do pronunciation uh, notes, whereby they just uh, give people notes as this and say, oh, you know what, you may not be able to spend it till after five or ten years. That could just be the only way that um, government will be able to pay this debt that they are collecting from CBN. Now, but uh, if, if the present administration fails to sign it or fails to go uh, through with it, uh, what other alternatives are open to this administration to get money to fund what, whatever thing that they want to do? Well, um, the administration has uh, hit the ground running based on pronouncements. So hopefully we we'll begin to see um, you match action with your pronouncement. And so, number one, if you have removed fuel subsidy, you are getting almost um, four to five trillion in that sector alone. That alone is half of the budget deficit that we are suffering already. So definitely, uh, we expect them to widen the tax bracket. And in terms of widening the tax bracket, we are not saying tax already tax. We are only saying that maybe you need to begin to find creative ways to get money from the informal sector. Uh, that again, that's another way where they can have money. They can also look at the uh, uh, cost of governance and look at the Anosoya report and also say, look, we have to reduce the cost of governance also. And so definitely, I think uh, they, if they do these three things, and remember that the Moribond, uh, 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 maybe 
uh, arm of government, especially in terms of uh, whether the refineries and others, we will fully take in that this administration we do away with them by privatizing them and selling them, selling them to private hands. That also bring money to the coffer of government. So there's still other means of having money without borrowing. And also, when you look at the infrastructure project, what sort of type of infrastructure project do they want to embark upon? And so if they look at this infrastructure project, they could bring the PPP, whereby they give them the build and upgrade for the next 25 years and enjoy tax bracket and also create employment for Nigeria. So there are a lot of ways that are creative ways that this government can have a, a, a money to run, run the affair of the, of the nation. Okay, you mentioned fuel subsidy. Uh, we talked about it earlier with uh, my other guest, but uh, we cannot overemphasize on this. Uh, you talked about it being something that will free off some cash for the government to do things in other places and all that. But now what, that the subsidy has been removed, uh, and then we are facing, we are going to face a, a partial monopoly in the oil sector where you have a private individual uh, running a refinery and dictating the the price of the commodity in our market and all that. Um, do you think removal of this subsidy, we are going to see the impact on the people soon enough? You see, I, I differ when it comes when people say monopoly, monopoly, monopoly. Uh, I always say, um, is there any other person that wanted to compete that space that was not given license? I remember that licenses were given to, to, um, to build modular refineries. Some modular refineries are, are working, but they would, most of them are, are just working in terms of diesel. And why they went to this diesel side is because they realized that uh, the petroleum sector was uh, um, largely uh, not privatized, that is deregulated. So they went to the sector that is not direct. It's, 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 uh, I mean, the, the petroleum sector was regulated, the special PMS. So most of the more about, um, uh, uh, refineries that we have now, uh, they, they, they decide to do something on, the, on diesel alone. So because that space is not regulated. So definitely, um, Dangote took a risk and now the government is saying, look, we are removing subsidies. Well, because of Dangote, they are removing subsidies. Remember, uh, President Goodluck a Bele Jonathan attempted to remove subsidy too. And this correct uh, uh, people in government were the ones that fought against it. Now that they are there, they are saying what it is like and they want to remove subsidies. So subsidy is not about Dangote, but it's just that it's happening at the time that Dangote took the risk and said, look, I need to build the refinery. He took, and remember that most of these funds that Dangote collected, they're not only from Nigerian banks also. So, uh, modular refineries are there. They are, so, if you say you are not, you are not, not uh, you are deregulated, you are no more regulating that space, a lot of modular refineries will come up. Remember, again, it's not your voice, it's not. And then this belongs to the people of Nigeria. So, that's not monopoly. And again, when you talk about uh, monopoly, you need to. Government been asking people to come and collect licenses to be refined. So for me, I, I don't want to agree with this asking that oh, you are giving a, uh, one person a, a, a monopoly. Remember again, government are giving money for the turnaround maintenance of um, what I call refinery, or a refinery, living cardinal refineries. So it's it's it in the also of government to, to make sure those refineries are working and they also become a competitor. So for now, we can't be saying oh, monopoly, monopoly. We need to look at the bigger picture. Somebody has started it, and others will follow it up in this main sector. At the point, everybody said Dangote was monopolized in that sector. But today, there's a lot of players in that sector. So that's the way it's that. When we started the telecom space also, it was people felt that MTN and uh, and, and, and Econet were monopolizing that sector. Until we had Glue and others, and it became a game changer. So it's a process, and I think we begin with with Dangote on stream, other people will come up on stream. And when you remove subsidy, and when you say that sector is begin to being determined by market forces, a lot of people will be refined. I don't be surprised when you begin to see the AO majors like Shell and Total uh, 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 and, and, and others begin to come up with refined resources. Okay, but in the meantime, uh, before other people are ready to take the risk which Dangote took, now uh, he's about the only one in, in that sector. Um, before that time comes, what do you think, in your opinion, should the government do immediately to make sure that people don't plunge into more suffering than they are already experiencing? Because just these two days, it's enough 
enough uh, suffering on the parts of the people because they can't see fuel to buy, they can't see vehicles to take them to places of work and every other place that they need to go, and so many other things have happened within this short space of time. So what are the palliatives you would suggest for the government in the interim? Well, the palliative for the government to do it in turn is for the uh, former Department of Petroleum Resources to swim into our actions. Um, subsidy will be removed. Um, subsidy, provision for subsidy was made till the end of June, but it's still in the month of May. So there's no reason for the panic back or they call it panic back or call it party. And most of these feelings are happening now. So I think it's all about regulators. Uh, the regulators being up there, hitting the arm, they are the big stickers that are trying to uh, take advantage of Nigerians. And some state governors are already in the corner of other states already say that, look, I'm going to revoke your CFO. I think uh, we need to know that uh, this regulation that is the challenge, is the challenge that we're having presently, not basically because of uh, um, subsidy. Everything is subsidy has been removed as we have we've all agreed. We still have provision for it in June. NLBC have not come up with the time play. They are the only ones that are importing petrol and product into the nation. They say they have enough of that quantity for us up till now. They've not put a new price tag on the petroleum uh, uh, price already. So there's a lot of. Uh, so what we are seeing now, uh, just a matter of what we could put, uh, not, uh, I think, uh, mostly uh, uh, private uh, independence market are taking advantage of Nigeria. If you realize the major marketers are still selling for. At the uh, 185 naira per liter, especially in Lagos and Abuja. But what we are seeing is that the independence marketers would have also been practicing this for a very long time. And the one selling for 300, 400, and 500. So, definitely, it's all about regulation. And I think the regulatory authority should move up and they are then reduce the, the suffering of Nigerians. And if you are talking about when finally we remove subsidy, what are the benefits for us? There's a lot of benefit in the long term, but in the short term, you, you have to bear the pain. There is a saying that says, no pain, no gain. I think that's where we are as a country now. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mukhtar, for coming through for us. And uh, we do hope that you'll have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, we've been talking with Mukhtar Mohammed, international finance and economics analyst here in Lagos State. And he was trying to help us understand what is happening in the... Uh, where, where they see um, the federal government or the Senate rather has raised the borrowing capacity of the federal government through ways and means from 5 to 15 uh, percent and other issues related to the economy. We'll take a short break and bring the weather report to you and then after that we hope to bring you sports. <laughs>